I want to cover this because this is another example of the of the Biden administration and Demo and the Democratic Party being anti labor. I know you guys have been hearing how Joe Biden is the most pro labor president in modern American history. Well, for for example, means nothing. By the way, absolutely means nothing. That statement could be true or false. Whether it's true or whether it's false, it means nothing because he is a net negative for the working class. So during the, his campaign, Joe Biden said he wouldn't give federal contracts to union busters. You guys remember that? And then you mm -hmm. had Amazon, who is the largest union buster in this country, bringing up the Amazon union. But then Joe Biden and the Democratic Party gave them contracts, correct? And we all know that Joe Biden is famous for the rail strike. He broke the rail strike. And you have liberals that apologize and act like fucking scabs to this day. Well, they're like, well, you know, Joe Biden negotiates the vacation day, blah, blah, blah. You know how much shit the workers could have got considering how much was on the line? He robbed them of he robbed them of their negotiation power. AOC, Bernie Sanders, and the squad robbed them of their negotiation power. The Democratic Party is the enemy of labor and unions. So not only is he backing and supporting union busters, helping uh, union, uh, helping the capitalist class break labor. Look at this. Look at this, fam. So the DNC National Convention named a co-chair today. Here is uh... Minion Moore. Minion Moore works for a public relations firm called Dewey, Dewey Square. Dewey Square works with corporations like Lyft and other union busters to squash their union and, and block labor laws. So this she's the, exec, the chief executive at this public relations firm that blocked labor laws and helped bust unions. And she was just named the chair of the DC <laughs> convention, CJ. Uh... You can't make this shit up, fam. You can't. This is the pro most pro labor president. They they could have chose anybody, and they chose the union buster. So Lyft paid her over ten million dollars, CJ. You guys remember the big controversy between Lyft treating their workers like shit? They wasn't yes. making minimum wage. They weren't getting time off. They were sued by the attorney general in Massachusetts, who just just so happened to be a Democrat. They sued them. So then Lyft went on a massive public relation campaign, paid these people to help overturn that uh, overturn and drop the lawsuit. Then they they uh, they teamed up with a bunch of lawmakers who was paid off by Lyft and these other uh, capitalists, and they eventually got the lawsuit turned out. And he also blocked a labor law that would have went after Lyft. This labor law made it so that Lyft had to force, uh, instead of acknowledging their employees as independent contractors, they got to be employees so they can get worker benefits. So they worked together to block that law. And Lyft paid her and her organization to help them do it. So Joe Biden and the Democratic Party chose her to be le he, uh, lead of the DNC. So here's the headline. That's my explanation. I, can't, I may have butchered it, oh, but I'll God. read the headline subheadline. Democratic National Convention Chair Firms helps companies block labor laws. The Dewey Square Group, where many and more leads the state and local affairs, was paid millions of dollars last year by Lyft for the industry group fighting state labor protections. So I'll just read the first, I'll just read the first paragraph here and uh, another part that's relevant. Biden has a go-to line of speeches where he say he's the most pro-union president you've ever seen. Next year's DNC convention, though, will be ran by an executive at a public affairs firm that is helping companies such as Lyft and Tenant Healthcare fight labor protections. So this is the part, I did the last part I read on here. Last year, DSG, where she works at, scored a seven-figure payday from his client, Lyft, as part of a Massachusetts campaign to prevent state lawmakers from classifying gig workers as independent contractors. Then you had the Attorney General, Maura Healey, a Democrat who was elected governor last year, brought a suit. They sued Uber and Lyft in 2020, arguing that the company were violating labor laws by treating drivers as independent contractors and accusing them of unfair and exploitive labor contracts. So I actually want to click this link here. 
because uh, I didn't see this thing here. This is the attorney general. They issue a statement. Oh, so they, they, they I, actually, I did read this. They, Lyft and Uber attempted to strike down a lawsuit and the attorney general uh, sided against Lyft. So in response to this, Lyft and other countries, uh, Lyft and other countries, might well be countries, but Lyft and other companies <laughs> launched a public influence campaign following the playbook the company had developed with high-spending California ballot initiative campaign and a New York lobbying push, supported a proposed Massachusetts ballot initiative that would classify app-based drivers as independent contractors, among other policies. So then they go on to explain how they actually got uh, the lawsuit against them thrown out, and they also blocked the labor protection that was going to benefit the Lyft driver, drivers. And she is the chief executive of it, of this organization, and now she's going to be part of DNC. And it's her profile on DSG, and this is what they call themselves. So DSG is an organization that work with corporations to break strikes and destroy labor laws. Minion is Minion is considered Minion is actually a very that's not how you say it, but actually a very fitting name. Minion. <laughs> Minion. Her name is Minion. I'm saying it wrong. Her name is Minion. But I might as well call her a minion because she's a minion in the capitalist government. Minion is considered one of the nation's top strategic thinkers with extensive experience in political and corporate affairs, as well as public policies. She leads DSG state and local affairs and multicultural strategies. So CJ, breaking labor, breaking strikes and uh, breaking labor laws is multicultural now. Wow. And wow. this last part, this is not a long story. This is the last part of the story. So you have this union buster, this person who lobbied against labor laws in, in Massachusetts. You have Joe Biden who broke the road strike and given federal contracts to union busters. So unions are surely going to protest the DNC convention, right? <laughs> right? Nope. Union leaders done it once again so as the democrat party anoint an anti-labor person as the dnc uh, convention chair unions reached an agreement with democrats where they will have a ceasefire they're gonna have a ceasefire where they will not have any picket signs or protests at the dnc convention this is unbelievable wow. this is <sighs> Union leaders selling out workers once again. And my question is, why the hell would anyone agree to this? You had Joe Biden, one of the most anti-labor presidents we have seen, breaking strikes. You had the Democrat Party that is anti-labor and anti-worker. And you have, an, have them in a position where you can grab them by the balls, CJ. It's the DNC convention. Everyone's going to be covering it. When's... When is there a better time for labor to protest the Democrats who betray labor other than the DNC convention? So labor union leaders said ceasefire where they're not going to protest them. They say, oh, we promise we won't protest. We will do our work. You, there will be a lot of union workers that will do their work with no, pro, with no protest. How does this benefit the worker movement at all? Especially, and they did. They made this agreement, knowing they was gonna pick many and more the anti labor leader. Yes, because she would get protested today. against. She would get protested against. Yeah, so they knew that. Yeah, so that's my short story. This is just yeah. Another we're gonna change that. We're 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 gonna change that. Tom Hartman, David Sirota. <laughs> yes. We just gotta yeah. get in the Democratic Party to change this corruption. It is truly. I mean, it's it's good and bad. And the good part of it is that it's giving us an opportunity to point out yet again the corruption of this party and possibly influence somebody to, to dim exit. So, I mean, that's that's how we have to look at this is that we just have to keep because it feels like, Nick, sometimes it feels like, man, it feels like, man, we're turning a corner. feels like we're getting all the information out. And it's like, man, there's a bunch of pile more of propaganda we got to fucking <laughs> yep. attack. It's like, damn, it's like never, it feels never ending. And that's, that's yeah, it feels never ending.